ownership of this procession belongs to Imam Zamana. And that is the main important thing. In the morning I heard that they have closed this down. I got up and said, Mola, it's your procession. I can't do anything. It's not in my hand. And you see, Alhamdulillah, it's open. First the police said, no, we are not opening it. And I'm one aim of the vision that I have is that this should go on forever. I'm here today, tomorrow I won't be there. But this procession of Imam should go on every year to remind of the people what happened to the family of the Prophet ﷺ, why they were killed, why Imam Hussain stood up, knowing that he has no chance of winning the battle or the war, but he stood up, what was his, in his mind, what was the cause. So we come here and say, we will propagate the teaching of our Imam Hussain why he did it, and we come every year and remind you what you did to the family of the Prophet. This is very important. We made a promise to our Imam that we won't let them forget it. Originally, the procession started in Hyde Park. After a few years, it, it moved to Marble Arch. And for the last 25 years, it's been purely starting and finishing at the same place. My father has always thought, and I agree with him, that the reason why we start and end at the same place is because this is very much a family event. Lots of women come, children come. You've seen lots of people also who are elderly, those on wheelchairs. So it's a lot easier for the Mormonim, which attend on the day, to start and finish at the same place. So that way, they can park nearby. Now if we, for example, we were given the option 20 years ago to go to Trafalgar Square. If we go to Trafalgar Square, to get back from Trafalgar Square, back to Marble Arch, people have no idea how to do it. If you walk two miles there, you have to then walk two miles back, or try and find the right bus to bring you to Marble Arch. So we've always tried to keep it in the same place, so it's a lot easier for people to, who come and join the event where they can park their car at the same place where the actual event ends. It could be in the future we do change the route because you may have seen this year that the procession martial law was so big that we used one and a half sides of Park Lane. Normally you'd have just the whole procession on one side of Park Lane. Because there were so many people, mashallah, we actually were one and a half sort of lanes, one and a half times Park Lane. So it could be that if we come to a stage where the whole procession doesn't even fit on, on Park Lane, we may have to change the route. About the Marble Arch is also the history. The Hyde Park refused me to use it for the Arbaeen. I went to my, oh, through the Scotland Yard. The in charge was a friend of mine, in a sense. We were friendly. I went there and I told him, look, I have no place. Now we have to do this. He said, uh, give me a few minutes. He made some calls and came back to me. I got it for you. I mean, what? You're going to start at Marble Arch. From that year, if you go 100 years back, it has never been used that way for a procession to start. Never from the Marble Arch. Hussain Islamic Trust was the first institution which was allowed Marble Arch as a starting point. As you know, that we start with uh, children and then we have Salat and so on and the speeches and it's wonderful how it happened I don't know I had no idea about the Mabu Lodge nothing in my mind that we can start from there because I knew that nobody has ever started from there 
that's American. That's the moisture for me. And it continued. It nearly stopped, I mean, not once, many times. Now we have reached to a point where it cannot be stopped. Bola has brought us to some extent, to that point where they don't have the, I hope, they don't have the power to stop us anymore. And my prayer and my vision is that I'm here today, tomorrow I'm not. Wakar is here today, tomorrow is not. But this procession of Imam Hussain al Islam, our main procession, should be there this century and even in next century when we are not here. That is my wish, that is my vision, and all the time, believe me, when I'm on the procession, I'm looking for that we do not do anything which will give them a reason to stop it. That's the most important thing. We always say at the Arabain on our website at any TV program before Arabain that any placards or banners which we have not bought have to be authorised beforehand. If you wish to distribute any kind of leaflet or bring with you a placard or a banner, we must see a copy of it first. We have to make sure the right message goes out. So for example, in the past, before um, colour printing was so popular, um, a, a group of people published a very nice colour um, leaflets. And on one side, it was about Karibullah, the tragedy, what happened to Imam Sayyid Salam, very well written. On the other side, it said, if you're a woman and don't do your hijab, you will burn in hell. Now to hand out this sort of literature to non-Muslims, or even to Muslims themselves, would really damage our cause. You know, we have to get the right message out. So you have to make sure and verify that anything anyone brings it is acceptable to the trust and it brings the right image and the right uh, projection of, for the event. The Arabain, especially in London, is unique in the UK where we bring together all the different Shia communities. You would have seen in Arabain those reciting or doing Azadari or doing Matam, for example, not just in English and in Urdu and Arabic, but in Farsi and also other languages. Also, you've seen this year, for the first time, the Jale Jalal, the 40 lights, for example. So we encourage each community to bring your, your items of, of Azadari to the event and to do Azadari in the way that you do it at home. I remember when you went back to Ayat Sistani many years ago in, in Najaf, he said to us, you should all do Azdari the way that you have been doing it for centuries in your community. But at the same time, we are also educating the public. Through our banners and placards being in English, our education team who would go out on the day, um, talking to the public, we're doing both things. We're doing, we ask everyone to do Azdari in the way that they do it at home or in their home country. And we are promoting the values of Imam Salaam through our placards and banners and the education team. When it comes to the Arabian procession, and if you look at our website, we're probably the only charity which does not appeal for funds. We do not do any fundraising. We do not um, advertise anywhere our bank details. Of course, we do have our own bank account, the trust account, um, because the events become more and more expensive each year. And if you wish to um, have new things or build new things, and new shabbies or new darboards, new uh, zeris or flags, it all costs money. But we have, we have not in the past, um, up to now, re requested for funds. I mean, if someone wishes to, to sponsor something, for example, there's a great need for toilets. 
been such a large event for the last two, three years, we've been trying to arrange toilets. Um, the cows have now said for next year, they will definitely authorize us to have mobile toilets uh, at the Arubain. But of course, that's very expensive. I mean, it's not, you'd be surprised how much it costs to hire toilets on a Sunday. Just the delivery charge for toilets is £2,000 to deliver toilets on Sunday to be picked up and dropped off at Marble Arch. So if people wish to, wish, wish to sponsor items, by all means, please speak to us and we can let you know what you can sponsor. But in terms of funding, it's done relatively in the, in the family. And my father has a few close friends um, who help us each year um, with, with paying for the events. The various things we have to pay for, like the security, for example, and the food. We have problem with the food. People bring food. I can't accept it unless I know the people. Because it's, it's the time is not, it's dangerous time. Anybody can come, bring some food and have some poison or whatever it is. Uh, so we have to be very careful about many things. I'm just mentioning one, that for food I'm very strict about it that anybody brings, unless you know him personally, that he belongs to this family and not just knowing by face, that not, means nothing. If you know the background of him, and if you slightly put it inside, don't distribute it. Because we can't take the risk. Any small incident of this type will give the council and the police and the administration uh, chance to stop it and that we can't afford and I hope in this regard and other regards Mullah will keep on helping us. I know we would have, we can't run this without his help but the amount of help I get, oh, I can't thank enough and we have a system now because it hurts me if somebody comes to a mom's procession and he spent four or five hours there, two, three hours traveling, and he goes home without the baruch, without this. This hurts me. And I said, this, I cannot accept it. No matter what happens, everyone must have the baruch. If somebody leaves in between, that's a different thing. And Alhamdulillah, for the last many, many years, maybe seven, eight years, that uh, almost everybody who wants Tabarruk gets Tabarruk. Um, we have so much that in the end a lot is left over. We have drinks, lots of drinks, hot drinks, cold drinks, soup, many things. And uh, they are done by different individuals. We know them, we discuss it. All right, you want to bring this, okay, you can bring it. We'll give you space, this much space. and. You do the job. This year, it was absolutely amazing to see that when the event finished, our turnout was so huge in terms of the number of people which attended the Arabian. It was by far our largest event in terms of the number of Mormonim which attended. We served about 30 to 40,000 hot drinks on the day. Uh, in terms of food, the other challenge we had this year, those who are familiar with Arubain and Marble Arch, there was a huge theater. So the green grass area adjacent to Marble Arch that we normally use for our food area, for the Mokibs, was this, was this year out of bounds. So every inch counted this year and for us it was a success in terms of we managed to distribute so much food and hot drinks uh, on the day um, so and in such a small area and there were still people i know who on the day because the food area was hidden it was behind the theater even though we were announcing all the time there was plenty of food plenty of hot drinks in the name of imam Salaam being served please take your food I'm sure many went without because you couldn't see it on the day. But um, Alhamdulillah, those were our challenges on the day in terms of um, things that we had to uh, face on the day, be it the closure of, of Marble Arch, the weather conditions, and being rather cold. Alhamdulillah, it didn't rain. And of course, um, the theatre where it was.
electronic media has really done wonderful job for us for the urban procession because now people know uh, print media can't do that nobody nobody go and write uh, uh, you write an article and there's somebody going to read it for an hour no nobody wants but if it's on the tv they watch it they know it and they know exactly when is urban procession when it will start when it will finish they know everything anything else they want we have the www.urbanuk.com and there are all the details are there in terms of media coverage um, it, we've always tried to break into the national media now for example you have the shia channels there we had pakistani news channels there these are the, the pakistan official news agencies the equivalent of the BBC, so yeah, Geo News, AOI News, these are two large Pakistani news corporations, the largest in Pakistan. They were both there. We had several um, Arab channels which were also there. And for this year, for the first time, we had an Argentinian news channel which appeared, which was, was, was amazing, that there was an Argentinian South American news team reporting the event. Two years ago, when we first had these mass of placards, like no to ISIS and no to terrorism, that created a lot of awareness. We had the national press endorsing the event. We had Mirror Online. We had the independent newspaper, again, all um, talking about the event and praising it. In fact, the independent, I looked last week, 871,000 people have liked the report of the Arabian that they made. So 871,000 normal English people have read about the Arabian procession. So that's been amazing how we've now finally managed to break into the UK media. Not enough. We'd love to see the BBC come down, ITV News come down, Channel 4 News come down. And I'm hoping surely, slowly and slowly, all these news channels will come to the Arab Bay and report it effectively, inshallah. To be honest, I never expected anything. If I get, that's a bonus. I know I'm a sinner. I'm no angel. And I do it, and I hope a mom will accept. Acceptance is the most important thing. See? Uh, if he's accepted, Alhamdulillah, nothing better than that. Uh, for example, one of the television they started giving award. The the first award they gave, which was given to me by the television people. Then there were two other awards. Fine. Then I come to this cap. This is the most important for me. This gives me the right to work as a khuddam at all the Rosa of Ajil Bath. If I go to Najaf Ashraf, I can work there. I'm entitled. Go to Imam Sain Islam, I can work there. I can go to uh, Baghdad and so on. So how it has happened, I still don't know. Because I'm, as I researched it, I found that I'm the first Indian Pakistani to be given this honor. Okay? And why they have given me, I have absolutely no idea. Do I deserve it? I don't think so. But if I go, if they have given me, it's because of urban procession. What happened about a year and a half, they came to my house. They talked to me. I have no idea why they are here. After three months, I knew they are thinking on this line. And last year at urban, they came and this cap, they had in a box which was sealed. They opened it in my presence and they put this on my head. And that's the end of it. Then, about two weeks back, or maybe three weeks back, I rang them because everybody was asking about it. I said, what this cap is all about? Then they explained me that this cap entitles you to work as a khuddam at all the rosas in Iraq. I, I didn't know that at the, at the time. 
And the second thing they told me that after you, it will go to a car. It is such a great honor that I can, I can never think of it. And I actually cried. And I told Mola, if you want to give me something, give it there. This is where I, this is when I will need. I don't think I need here. That's my feeling. And uh, I was talking to an Ali Medin, he said, no, no, it's okay. Uh, if he has given you something here, he will give you there as well. Don't worry about that. Because I'm just a bit shocked. So this is the honor, which is, I'm very proud of it. I wear it with very pr with pride all the time. Uh, when I go to Majlis and some important places, only then I wear it, otherwise not. And I have worked uh, at one of the Raza about six months back. And in the next two, three months, I'll be back in Iraq. And inshallah, at least two or three Raza, I'll go and work. Go to all Rauzas anyway for Ziyarat, but work at least two or three, inshallah. If I live, if Allah give me time, uh, in January or February I'll go there, or inshallah I'll work as a khutam. Uh, they don't give me the work really, uh, <laughs> because of my age or something, uh, they will tell me, all right, you can go and stand there. And so, I mean, khutam, that's what they do. They are guide there, uh, and I don't know the language. <laughs> if somebody asks, and then it's really embarrassing for me. But I stand there, and inshallah, I'll go there and work as hard as I can uh, at the Rosa. Uh, that's an honor for me to work at the Rosa, to do something at the Rosa. That's what uh, I'll be doing the rest of my life. I'm, I'm planning that in future, I'll go to Iraq and Iran two or three times in the year and uh, do some work. Maybe five days here, four days here, but that's what I want to do. I, um, I hope and I pray that I can do that. I think when it comes to say the Shahada, Imam Sayyid, I think every Shia has their own connection with him in their own way. Uh, for some people, um, he's, he's somebody who they always look up to in terms of if they have problems, they make him into, into a basila and ask him to pray on their behalf to, to Allah to solve their problems. For some people, Imam Sayyid is so close to them you know, even though they've never seen him before, you don't have to be in Karbala at the Holy Shrine to, to know Imam Sayyidina As a child, we grew up and we heard the story every year about Karbala and about Sham and about Kufa. And I think for me personally, my connection to Imam Sayyidina is in more ways than one. Of course, the, the procession we hold every year is for him. And we, we look to him to protect the procession. There are so many things which are out of our control, like this year. And we look to him to solve these problems for us. But sometimes some things we can't solve. And it's only with divine intervention that those problems can be solved. When we're told that Marble Arch cannot be reopened until the next day, and then you pray to say this other, please help us, this is your procession. And it was solved. So, for myself, the connection is, I hope, very strong. I hope that he's, he sees our work that we do sincerely each year, our whole team, all our volunteers, and all those which work behind the scenes. Those, for example, who work on our website, Zafar Amir or Ariba Sultan, our stewards, our chief steward, all these people who help, you know, that Imam Sayyid Salaam protects them and looks after them and solves their problems that they may have. So I think we all have a link to Sayyidina Shahada in some way or another. Some of us, because of the Arabian, 
you're naturally thinking about him all year round. But you're always thinking, what can we do for next year? How, what do we have to do for next year? How can we improve things next year? So you're all, I, I'm naturally, the trust is always thinking about Imam Hussein. Not just in Muharram and Safar or Rabi Awal. We're thinking about him all the year round and how we can make the position better. How we can um, help the Zawars, the Mormoni which come each year to Arbain, to Marble Arch. What can we do to make it better for them? So we, even when Muharram is over, we are still thinking, we are still planning, still talking about Imam Sayyid Islam. In my fight, Imam Zamana always helped me. And I'm grateful without that, his help. I mean, I can't even move. Let us be honest. And I have found in 35 years, whenever I have a problem with the Arbain procession, and I ask the Imam, I really I asked directly to the Imam, and I always got it, 100%, not 99%. And that's what I want, Mullah, to continue giving me and Vakar support to continue this urban procession. And as it is growing, I mean, I'm sure that in the next 10 years, we'll be talking about 40,000, 50,000 people coming to it. Ladies, can you go forward? Ladies, ladies, can you go forward? Ladies, can you go forward? Like my father said many times, that the real person in charge of the procession, of all processions, is our awaited Imam, the 12th Imam, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. He is the person, at the end of the day, who's watching what we're doing. He is with us. We cannot see him, but he can see us. And that's why we always say to our volunteers on Arbain, your akhlaq must be 100%. Your hijab must be 100%. At least on the day of Arbain. Because you are all there as ambassadors of the 12th Imam You are there to ensure that Arbain is commemorated in the best way. And that you do, everyone knows how, whether they've performed or not, whether they've done enough effort or not. And the Imam is there, he may be in hiding, maybe not visible to us, but he can see what we're doing. So it's really important that on Arabain that we all maximize our capabilities, our strength. It's a tiring day, it's a long day, but no doubt the Imam will see what we're doing. So inshallah, Imam Zamana will help us to propagate the teaching of Al Bayt as far as possible. Labbaik ya Hussain, Labbaik ya Hussain, Labbaik ya Hussain, Labbaik ya Hussain, Labbaik ya Hussain. <laughs>